Greetings in the Lord Jesus Christ, Him who is God the Son. Hallelujah! Praise His holy name. This is part two of the study, The Deeper Life. And what is the deeper life? It is God within us. Almighty God. By that I mean A-L-L -L, and then mighty. Not that we are the Almighty God, but God himself who is Almighty, living within, energizing, quickening, filling the whole being with his life. That everything is his and he working in us and through us to his own glory. Isn't that something quite amazing and quite wonderful? That God himself will quicken our bodies, quicken our minds, quicken our spirits, quicken our whole beings. And because of that, the whole being his energy is, has his being flowing in and flowing out. Glory to him. Now I'm going to continue now in Romans 8. The first we'll read from verse 4. Let's see where there is a break. Um, to verse 8 inclusive. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. What are you in? Are you in the flesh or are you in the spirit? Are you carnally minded, which is death? Or spiritually minded, which is life and peace? Clear distinctions here. And clear distinctions that can be seen so clearly in these days. Amongst that which calls itself Christianity and church watches, there is that which is carnally minded and of the flesh, and that which is of the Spirit, the Spirit of God within. The righteousness of the law. There's only one who through his own righteousness, could fulfill the law. The law of God, the demands of God, as given in the Old Testament. And it took the Son of God himself to come and fulfill not just some of the law, but every part of it. And it was his righteousness which fulfilled the law because he made right with God. And it is his righteousness within those who have the Lord Jesus Christ within them that are made right with God. 
No one can make themselves right with God unless it is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And because of the righteousness of Christ within, there is that, as it shows, states, walking, after, walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Because it's the Spirit of God within, so the Spirit of God within will not walk according to the flesh. It has one, it's nothing at all. The flesh is abhorrent to the Spirit of God. The flesh is filth. By the flesh it means that which is carnally minded, which wants its own way, which wants to go its own way against God, wants to do that which rejects the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God brings in the cleansing the sanctification, the second blessing, as it used to be called, a second experience beyond that of being born again. There are those who are born again who do not want to go beyond that. They don't want to go beyond being born again of God. Don't want to commit their whole being to God. Don't want the Almighty God living in and through them. Because when the Almighty God lives in and through us, it's for his own glory. And it's certainly not to be carnally minded and live after the flesh. And that's what it is. And the most of what calls itself Christianity is carnally minding and living after the flesh because he's never been born again, never been washed and cleansed through the blood of the Son of God, never welcomed God to, into their, their whole beings, never had the desire to receive all of God. This is the deeper life. That desire that wants and wants and wants until it has received the Almighty God within. And once the Almighty God is within, he does take into the deep things of life. Because it is not the life in the flesh or the carnal life. It is the life in the spirit. And the life which is the life of the servanthood of Christ. The life which pours itself out, comes in and comes in and comes in continually, comes in and continually pours out and doesn't desire a thing for, it, for itself. The self-life is not the almighty, Almighty God within. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Why do they mind the things of the flesh? Because they do not have God within. There has not been that change of life. There has not been that imputing of the righteousness of Christ within. It's all to do with that which is without. All to do with that which is centered upon the flesh. Centered upon that which is the f of the body wanting its lusts. And what does so much of Christianity do? Does it condemn it? It condones it. 
Uh, praise God for such as Archbishop Oko of Nigeria and his stance against what is his stance against? Oh yes, I'm sure it's well known. But have a look at Romans 1 and read from eight, verse 18 to the end and you'll see from God's standpoint rather than the standpoint of men and women. Men and women who were not born again of God have nothing of the divine nature within them. The divine nature will not touch anything whatsoever. The divine nature within will not touch anything whatsoever that's listed there in Ro from Romans chapter 118 to the end. But yet, the so-called church here, the Church of England, Church of Scotland, Church of Wales, and other denominations, they do not condemn that which the Word of God states. That is none of the Spirit of God. It's treading underfoot the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. When there is that of the lusts of the flesh, the lusts of the carnal mind. Because it's not being regenerated by God himself. To have a new mind, a new being, a new life, a life within a life, not a separate life, which goes on. You might say, oh yes, I've, I've, I've signed a piece of paper. I said, oh, I'm sorry, but there's no change of life. God is shut out. God is not, not come within. God is not permitted within. There's no deeper life there. Even should someone say, think, oh, I've been born again of God. Where is the evidence of being born again of God? Because the divine life changes. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Let us be true to the word of God. And this, this contrast But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit and the things of the Spirit will not t touch those things which are abomination and filth before a holy God. Can't do. Because the divine nature has come in. And the divine nature is pure, is holy, is righteous. It will never go against the word of God. Or to be carnally minded is what? Is death. Because to be carnally minded is not being born again of God. Carnally minded is still under. S Lucifer himself still has the life of Lucifer within. The life of rebellion against God and the rebellion against the word of God. And we'll have nothing to do with, with the things of God, let alone the deeper life.
because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Enmity is an enemy against God. To be carnally minded, yes, is deaf. Why? The minding of the flesh is shown in the margin. Are you beginning to see the contrast, the opposites, the absolute opposites? That which is so much called itself Christianity and church is the opposite to the word of God. Is the opposite to what the spirit of God is, is saying through the word. Because it is carnally minded and it is encouraging to be in the flesh. By going against the word of God. The carnal mind, yes, is enmity against God for what it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be carnal mind can never bring itself of itself to be subject to God. It's only the workings of the Holy Ghost and fulfilling that which the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ said when the, about when the Spirit is come, when the Holy Spirit is come, he will convict of sin of righteousness and of judgment. And most of what is called itself Christianity in church today is denying that the Holy Spirit is needed to convict of sin, righteousness and judgment and convict hell-bound sinners on the broad road to a lost eternity. Because there's no conviction of sins. There's no preaching for the conviction of sins. And if I don't disturb you through this message, then something is sadly wrong. If you're not born again of God, then this message should convict you. Because your sin is denying God his rightful access to your life. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Why is that not being made known from the pulpits? Why is it not being no made known in the synods of the Church of England? But the opposite is being supported. And as the word God of God says, they that are in the flesh cannot please God and will never please God because they've got another word, they've got a, a false Jesus. They've got a false spirit, another spirit, another gospel. And who is the other Jesus? It is Lucifer. Oh, synods of the Church of England, let the Lord of glory come into your hearts and cleanse them. The one who gave every drop of his blood to come in and cleanse you as a repentance of your sins. Otherwise, you faced a judgment seat. You faced a judge himself, the Lord of glory. 
the Lord Jesus Christ. You've much to answer for. But should you not even be born again? There's only one place for you, the place of torment, because you're under the other Jesus. Lucifer, and he, we know where he's going, ultimately into the lake of fire, with his angels, and those whose lives have never been given to the Lord Jesus Christ. Serious stuff. But yet, the word of God, Praise God for such as Archbishop Oko, who's made his stance and brought out into the open. And as he states, he won't be blackmailed. No. Oh God, have that man who undoubtedly is filled with all might. He's filled with all might of God. Not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not ashamed of the word of God. Not ashamed of the atoning blood. Not ashamed to call sin, sin, and sinners, sinners. And call to repentance. Bring by to bring, Lord, more and more to take that stance. That you in your all might, mighty life, in and through those who are wholly surrendered unto thyself, wholly filled with thyself, that there will be this stance against that which is of the flesh and the, that which is carnal and is within that which calls itself Christianity and Church. And it will be brought right out into the light, the light of God, to be seen for what it is. And in thy mercy, though the Holy, Spirit, Holy Ghost will cause conviction of sin, righteousness and judgment, and bring about repentance, to be washed, the si repentant sinner to be washed and cleansed through the precious blood of the Redeemer himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. And here is the distinction. Paul, writing, verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of this. Could you, could you have anything as clear as that? And it's Father, Son and Holy Ghost dwelling, living. In all his might. In all his purity. In all his holiness. In all his righteousness. Living his life. Could you have anything more. Than to have God living within you. And this is written to those. Who are in Christ is absolutely of no use to those who want to live in the flesh and carnal and not change. The expected norm in the early Christian church was to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. 
holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Have you done that? Are you still wanting to be in the flesh? Still wanting to have a carnal life? If so be that the Spirit of God dwell within you. Do you know whether the Spirit of God dwells within you? If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, and you have to be born again to even receive the Spirit of Christ, let alone seek the subsequent experience of a cleansed heart, a cleansed spirit, a pure heart, the heart of God within, the life of God within, Father, Son and Holy Ghost within, God in all his mightiness, And the quickening life of God throughout it, the day, every day. Quickening the, even these mortal bodies. He is none of his. Notice it says, none of his. In other words... You've nothing of God. And God is some remote being. God is not personal to you. God is not the living God to you. Because he doesn't dwell within. You might have an academic knowledge and think you know of something of God. But that won't get you anywhere. It's the living God within who is the deeper life. Oh God, you are the God, the only God, almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Ghost. And in these days, may there be that boldness to preach and to teach what it is, the distinction between that which is of flesh, that which is of carnal, and that which is of the Spirit of God. And to lead to a cleansed heart and to lead into the deeper things of God. To thy glory and to thy glory alone. Amen.